Stand by. Out. Good afternoon, everybody. It is Saturday. The whatever day it is, I have no idea. It is Saturday. Um, yeah, we did get one thing in that's nice. We got our legacy control system. It is Lana Legacy 6-14295. This is the control system and the control command base. So we are actually going to be opening here and showing what you guys in it and walking through you step by step how to set it up. I know there's a couple of videos out there on how to do it and they're like 25 minutes long. I just want to do a simple, quick, easy way to how to set up and how to program your, your locomotive the quick and easy way without having to use those little program chips and setting up everything and whatever else. So without further ado, we are going to get into opening that up. All right, so while we were opening this, we're gonna open this up. What you'll find in the box is all this. Take this little plastic covered guy off here. What you'll find in this box is instruction manual i've already read through this thing it is not a page turner it is really interesting it is good to read through it though i mean it tells you everything in the book what all the symbols do you know how to set up everything how to run pretty much everything but we'll get into that as we set up lit up systems so we'll just put that there these are your three batteries that you will need for your controller these are your program chips you get your two blues and one black this one is your data cable links. You're going to be running LHC systems or LSS systems or connection to these things, which we will not be using today. So it's just going to stay in there. This, however, is the power supply for the bite for the base itself and the charging. We're going to need that. This is the base for the system. Let me sit you guys down here so I can have two hands here. This is the base base for everything. That's what it looks like. On the back here you got your port for your antenna, your power supplies, your data connection link, and your accessory wire from the track. Alright, so now what we gotta do is we gotta pull this out. This guy is the antenna for the base. If we don't have this, the receiver will not work. Next is the handheld remote itself. This guy comes out. Take off the foam here. This is the remote for everything. All the buttons and the twisty thing and everything. That is everything right there. So now we are actually going to set up, show you guys how to set up all this stuff. I am not running AC. Um, everybody's told me that you have to run AC off of a conventional controller. Um, I've done some research on that and I have not been able to find anything that you cannot run DC uh, as a fixed current. Um, so we're going to find out if it works. But I, you know, I've had some people tell me that it just needs to receive a signal from the outer rail to the base to control everything um you know i just i don't have the time the extra money to buy a cw80 or anything like that to power everything so we're just basically going to run it as a dc power supply so it should work from what i've researched so if it works then i will just, just run it that way so all right with this we are going to be setting up everything we will need the base which is here. We will need the antenna. First thing is we gotta take the antenna and we gotta screw it into this little guy right here. Pretty simple, you just kinda line it up, screw it in, just like so. And then get this wired in, screw it in, just like that. So now we have the antenna. Next thing is we open our power supply box. Get this big old transformer here. Supply. One end has to be plugged into the wall of 110. 
and then the other end gets plugged into the back of your command base so with that we're going to take this and actually just plug this into the base right here so it sits like that now what we got to do is we got to take this and plug it into the wall outlet which is actually just behind us right here pretty simple easy for power let me get this in the wall here all right after getting that plugged in you should see some lights the lino light light up the legacy light and then you have a green light here on the base which is right there now we gotta get the remote set up or uh, batteries put in it so on this thing you got a little tab on the back here to remove the cover this thing comes with three rechargeable and lithium ion batteries we're just gonna stick them in here as the polarity says Ooh. What the heck? Okay, that one goes in there. This one goes in this way. Put the cover back on it. Now, the other thing too, you can run regular AA batteries in this thing, like Duracell Energizer, things like that. But one word of caution, if you're going to be putting this back on the base, make sure that on the bottom of this base, there's a switch. It says charger on or off right there. If you have regular batteries, please remember to turn this off or you will recharge your normal alkaline batteries and that will be not a good thing. So with that said, we're going to take this and actually just drop it onto the base here. When it is charging, you're going to have some red flashing lights once it recognizes the base. These lights here will flash red. When it is fully charged, it takes about a half hour to 45 minutes depending on how full or how dead the batteries are they will actually flash green. Pretty simple lighting instructions on that. These are just received codes from the remote to the base. So now what we gotta do is we gotta set up power and get our locomotive and stuff set up with that. I will show you guys what I'm talking about with the wire from the back of that to the track. All right, so now what we gotta do is you gotta have a one wire connector. What we gotta do is use the little guy right here. You gotta unscrew this. Okay, there's a little hole inside this ring you can put in here. You also can use the insert tails, which I don't have any, but this will work too. It's not going to go anywhere. Slide that in there and just screw this back down. This is the one wire I was talking about that needs to go to the outer side rail of a piece of track or anything like that. Right now I'm just going to be using this piece of track. Sit you guys down here so it's a little easier to do this. So. You got your outside rail, your outside rail, and your power track. Don't hook up the power track, you won't hook up the outside rail. So with this, we have two extra tabs sitting right here that you connect to. So this is the outside rail and this is the inside rail. So we just got to take this little thing and we got to insert it into the tab on for the outside rail right there to receive or send the signal, receive the signal on how exactly that works. And that's it right there. Now we gotta take this piece and connect it to our other piece of track. Okay, maybe I should turn that around. I don't have any power wires in our way. We're trying to program here. We'll connect that together. Okay, now that's how that's set up to go. We do have everything set up now. I got my SD70 on the track so what we gotta do first now is we actually gotta pop this cover off because you have to put the vehicle in run program mode if you guys can see that there's a switch right here it's probably dark let's see if I can get a light so you can see it so it says program run mode so what we gotta do is we gotta actually take that and switch that from run to program mode. After doing that, we gotta plug in track power right here. Yeah. Okay, track power is plugged in. Now on locomotive, you should have the number board lights right there. Number lit board lit up. So that's a good sign. And the locomotive did not run off either. If it has, sometimes it'll take off if something's going on with it. But anyway, so now what we gotta do? We gotta take our remote off the base. 
And now we've got to program it. So the easy way to do this is we're going to power this guy on. Now this will say cab one mode, engine 45, whatever it is. What we're going to do is we are going to name this engine one. And then we're going to hit, we're going to name this engine one. And then we're going to hit set. And the locomotive should power up. Because that means that it has accepted the command from the box to that. Now, we got to turn everything off on the locomotive and put it in the run mode. So we're going to do that right now. Unplug power. Switch that switch from program to run. Plug the power back in. Now, after plugging that back in, the locomotive should not have run off. It should have lit up the number boards and is now waiting for commands to, for us to program it and give us cab name and numbers in this guy right here. All right, so after we're doing that, we are gonna come back to the remote. With this, we are gonna hit info. This gives it the assigned names. Let me get you a little better here. So we are gonna hit scroll. This setting up, this is a diesel. So we're gonna select diesel. If it wasn't a diesel, you could hit steam or you know all the other different local This one is diesel, so you're gonna hit diesel. I'm gonna scroll over to the cab mode. This will be in cab one. This is a legacy system. So we're gonna hit legacy mode. Scroll over and we're gonna have Legacy RL sounds. So with that one, we're also going to give this a name. So we're going to hit name. We're going to name this one SD70. So what we're going to do is we use this here to scroll by turning this here to find SD. So we're going to find the S and we're going to hit add. Go back to D. We're going to space seven zero. And we're going to hit next. So now we're going to sign as a road name. My road names, I always like to use the number on the side of the locomotive here. In this case, on this one, this one here is 1943. So we're going to type in one nine four three. And then we're going to hit set. This will tell us everything is set and selected. Okay, so after you assigned your engine name and information, you can double check, make sure it's all right. I like to, just to make sure. So you select the diesel, because it's a diesel. You got the legacy mode, which is in legacy. If you had a TMCC locomotive, you would make sure it was on a TMCC uh, button mode instead of a legacy mode. This one has a legacy RS sound, so to make sure it's selected on legacy. You can also have no sounds where there's no sounds. You can have the rail sounds. You can have the rail sounds five or the legacy rail sounds, which is everything. But once that is all done, you've signed the name. You can hit info. And now we can hit the startup button. Now with these guys, you want to select your engine. You know, you select engine one. And then this button right here, you press the fire button and it should start up your engine. All right, well, something happened there. I had to reprogram some, a uh, couple things on the sounds weren't working. But anyway, here we go. What we gotta do is you gotta select engine one and it'll pull up your road number and your number so it's all ready to go. Now, if you fire it up, you push and hold the power button. This is the yard office. Do you read me? I copy that. Over. Watch your signals. Over. Yes, sir. We'll fire up. Out. And that's the crew talk talking back, getting it all fired up, ready to go. Let's actually turn the volume down here so I can hear. So anyway, with that, after we get done, we can replace this cover so your run program switch and your smoke switches are all covered. 
There we go. Just like that, so everything is back together. Now, after this is all set up, <clears throat> just to go forward, all you gotta do is take the thumb wheel and then spin it, and you'll notice up here at the top, the little speed dial will move, here, as I'll show you, and tell you your speed, which way you're going. And then, hopefully, if you program it right, the locomotive should run back and forth just fine. Your thumb wheel will slow it down. You can go back in reverse. Back it up. Just like that, pretty simple. Um, it does have a train. These have different functions. We'll just go over a couple of them. This is the horn and bell. If you push up for the bell. You know, are you pressing hold it? Just keep it going. You know, you push up to shut her down. And then if you bring this actually down, it will symbolize right here how many what the horns will do in. You know, right now I got the volume turned down. This is actually a train brake. We will show more of that when we actually get a layout going, which probably will not be till tomorrow or later. These different functions here. These are like RPM settings on the supercharger when you push it. You guys can hear that supercharger wind up. It'll go louder. Or you can shut it down here. I'm pushing those down button. You got the up button and the down button there. This button here controls the smoke level. When you actually push it, see how it says smoke low, smoke medium, or smoke high. Oh, I hit the rule 17 button. But then smoke high. That way it'll start smoking when you're actually moving it. All right, well, we had a little interruption there, but we're back. Um, now with this guy, on the front of this, you can control lights when you're actually moving. Your ground lights. You can turn them on and off, and if you guys can see it in the video, they're actually right there. The ditch pulse lights. Um, this guy here is the tower talk. This is the block operator. Where you stand at track speed. Acknowledged. I've got clear boards. Out. Okay. This guy here is the talk is the locomotive to your tower. As you notice, I don't know if you guys can hear that, but when you start rolling forward, the supercharger actually starts winding up. You guys can hear that. I got the smoke on, but it needs a little bit of time to warm up too. With that, let me get this volume turned down here just real quick. So, basically, with this, it is controlling everything on this guy here. This is actually the coupler, coupler controller. If your locomotives have coupler um, reliefs, you just push it and relieve it. Um, these are for your accessories for different track things. This guy here is a train brake for like drag, like in a real light, real train. When it's moving here, I can show you kind of uh, when it's moving. See that right there? And I'll pull this down. It'll simulate a break and slowly stop it. Uh, oh, I'm gonna run away here. The other thing you got too on this thing is you gotta actually break. So when it's actually moving, see how it's moving? You can put you pull this button down actually acts as a real life brake. Brake systems activate and squeaks and activates it. This is a speed control button, which changes the screen here from that to that. Um, it still does mainly thing. This is just a speed controller, where if you push this one, it's like one to 40 miles an hour 
and this one's like 40 to whatever but it just moves that to that speed itself you know if you push it automatically just boost it up there's just your flex buttons normal run stuff your crew talk your smoke levels you know that's pretty much about it um This has 199 steps for speed. Every step you can program the steps. Those steps I'm talking about is this guy right here. When you scroll this up, you can see that it turns to step two, step three. As many steps you go, the more features you can activate. Like after step 15, my ditch lights here turn off. I don't know if you can tell. See how they turn off after step 15? And then when you stop, the cab lights and the ditch lights come back on when you stop. And then the front, mark, front lights will shut off. That I have set up. You can change all that to do different steps. You know, like a step three, you can have the ditch lights turn off. You know, you can have a crew talk go as you're running. That has a bunch of different features and stuff. So, as of right now, we're going to back it down here and show you what the shutdown feature is. So as we're going to shut this down, all you guys do is hit the little circle button right there and just push that. And we can shut it down. So that is pretty much the Lionel Legacy Command Center. Um, this remote, all you got, when you shut it down, you can either leave it in the base and it has auto power down if you're not using it. Or you can just simply turn it off right here shut it down uh the base will stay on like i was saying with those lights there's not much to those lights the green light will stay on all its power those red flashy ones will make sure it's green when it's fully charged uh so far i've only had the charges once yes i did pull it out before i showed you guys this video just to play around with it make sure it is working uh it actually lasts pretty long i got about four hours of runtime out of these batteries um, you will get longer, longer playtime. I've been reading up on it. If you actually change them out to like Duracell or Energizer, standard, you know, batteries, alkaline batteries. Um, there are rechargeable batteries that are bigger. They only go up to about 2,700 milliamps. The batteries that are in here are 2,400 milliamps. So that is a little downfall for the price that you actually pay for this. Um, other than that, I've, I like it so far. I'm gonna get it actually set up on an actual layout when I can actually run it around and play with it a little bit more. I'll get a video on that um, here shortly with me running this with that one and just a couple of different things that work with this. So if you guys do like that video, please give it a thumbs up. Please share this video and also subscribe to the channel if you want to subscribe to more. We are doing some more stuff here. It is starting to warm up in Utah. It was 52 degrees today, which was nice. Uh, so yeah, but please like, share, subscribe. We also got a couple other things that we're doing over here. I got my boy playing with a couple other things on a different layout already. He loves them. So we'll probably be starting a little other thing here with a couple of those others. But yeah, let me know what you guys think about this.